The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission asks bank executives to submit assets declaration forms. The top bankers have until the end of June to do so or risk jail term. We'll be talking about this today. The Academic Staff Union of Universities threatened to go on another strike over unpaid salaries and check of dues. The union says more than a thousand lecturers have been owed 13 months wages. And the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project sues the federal government and the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, over the ban on Twitter by broadcasters. And with that, we say good morning and welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Thanks for joining us on another very bright and beautiful Monday morning. We hope the weather stays clear today, unlike what it was across Lagos yesterday. Good morning, Aneta. Good morning. Good to see you after Thank you very much. about five million years. We miss you. <laughs> Still not 100%, but, you know, <laughs> strong enough to kick off the week. Yes, and uh, good morning everyone. to you. So our top trending stories this morning, um, beginning first of all with... What is very sad, seeing how much division that we're coming to experience here in the country between the North and the South. And uh, moving on, we see that uh, it was a case of Nigerians versus Nigerians over the weekend when a, you know, a move was made to uh, get the entertainment app Iroko TV off Google Play Store. Now, it was started by some Northern Nigerians who said it was in retaliation for the deletion of Adam Ogaba's Crow app. And uh, this led to a flood of negative reviews on the app on the Play Store. Uh, soon enough, there was a counter campaign uh, started by another group of Nigerians, mostly from the southeast, who still started giving Iroko TV um, five-star ratings. Now, the app currently has about 4.8-star uh, rating from 31,000 reviews. And, you know, that disturbing trend I mentioned is ethnic bigotry. We know yeah. how Adamu Crowe's app was deleted from Google Play Store. That's because there were lots of negative reviews because of the style of the app just how people said you had access to your contacts. You know, it, it just required a lot of permissions that were not necessary for a social media app. How the logo seemed occultic and dark and mysterious. So there was a lot of complaints regarding that. Lots of Nigerians reported it, gave it negative reviews, said it had connotations of terrorism and it was taken off Google Play Store. So it's, it, you know, it became very worrisome to see that Youths from northern Nigeria decided to retaliate and they began to attack, you know, an application owned by a Nigerian businessman from the southeast um, by the person of Jason Njoko, owner of Roku TV. You know, so good thing that um, he was saved by the bell, so to speak. But the issue of ethnic division still remains very visible. Yeah, but um, so I'll start by saying it's not new and it's not the first time that I'm seeing. I mean, for everyone who has been social media active for the last couple of years, maybe the last, you know, eight, ten years, you know, there's been obvious uh, divisions. Maybe it has become worse um, over time. There's also, you know, certain accounts, you know, on social media that are um, known for some level of bigotry. Um, and that's what, you know, they sell themselves with. And that's, you know, whenever they, of course, put out information or, you know, messages, um, it always, you know, most of the time has a lot of, you know, some level of bigotry attached to it. And with that, you know, they grow a crowd, you know, who think alike, who think the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so that has always existed. Um, the Adamu Garba um, app, of course, you, everyone who has been following that story knows the reason it was deleted. Um, also knows the background towards you know why you know uh, you know it was eventually deleted. Um, yes, there might be arguments that it wasn't just because of its um, um, Spotify um, infringement. It wasn't also just because of you know some of the uh, parts of the app that showed that it you know it, it could take you know um, personal information and some of all of that. It is also um, maybe because of Nigerians' reaction. Um, or, you know, the reaction of Nigerians to his views concerning the NSAS protests and his views concerning uh, the um, banning of Twitter in Nigeria 
Um, a lot of people saw that, you know, he was trying to, um, out of his own selfish interest, um, promote his own app and, you know, and with that allow for the infringement of the rights of Nigerians across the country. And he didn't care about how many rights were infringed upon or how many, you know, lives were affected by um, the moves of, uh, exactly, the moves of the federal government because of his own selfish interests. And, you know, those might have been some of the reasons why he got those bad reviews and eventually was deleted. But the big challenge is when that happened, um, and, and you know, there's something that we always forget. The same way that I, you know, had said um, a couple of weeks ago that when, you know, the federal government, whoever it is, you know, found Nandikano's or whoever else's, um, you know, Twitter page or, or um, handle um, offensive, they stood, you know, and they, they, you know, have the right to report. And as long as you report, there would be action taken. As long as you report it, Twitter will take action. And if it finds it actually offensive, it will be deleted. But when you stand aloof, and you know when you know it, it and um, you know the um, Buhari Street was eventually reported and deleted, then they cry foul. It makes no sense. And so when the the um, Adamu Gaba campaign started, you know when people started putting up bad reviews and all of that, they had an opportunity at that time to put up their own good reviews, give it five star ratings, do whatever you can. Exactly. But they didn't. And eventually it was deleted. But now here's the challenge. Why is it that whenever something happens to someone from anywhere in northern Nigeria, the response is not to applications in any other part of the country but the southeast? That's where the target always goes to. And that's the bigotry that I'm talking about. So whoever it is that started that campaign is not angry with Nigerians for reporting Adamu Gaba's app. The president is targeting Igbo businesses and Igbo apps on, um, on, the, on, the, on the social media. That's where the biggest challenge is because they have not been able to free themselves from the imagination or the ideologies or the bigotry that, you know, that makes them always go against Southeasterners or against Igbos. That's where, for me, the biggest challenge is. Okay, I so saw that tweet. I saw one person, you know, you know started explaining some nonsense. Um, about how uh, these uh, people, you know, have supported NSAs and people from the southeast, you know, are the ones that are giving, you know, arms to Boko Haram and some, some total nonsense like that. So the challenge is whenever there's many other apps, many other platforms by Nigerians from every other part of the country. But the only ones that they had issues with and the ones that they thought that they maybe should, you know, um, um, you know give uh, bad ratings or whatever attack was the ones from people in the South. And it's terrible because Iroko app, Iroko TV app is a great innovation, you know, that we will call our own indigenous Netflix. You know, he's taken the movie streaming um, business locally. He's, he's made it ours. So Nigerians can watch Nigerian movies, African yeah. movies on that platform. And that's something we should all be su supporting. Just like how we mentioned Uber Boat, those are all um, apps by foreigners, you know. And then we're talking about My Cab, and these are the apps that Nigerians there's many, there's have. Too many of them. Exactly, that Nigerians have, you know, uh, come up with just to counter that, you know, price and whatever challenge they had. We, we talked about this on the breakfast. So I feel that we should begin to support Nigerian-owned businesses. We should ignore wherever Southerner, Northerner. I think these things don't matter. And I think it's very scary to see where this is leading because we're talking about elections just around the corner. We're talking about um, all the agitations and clamoring for presidential zoning to the Southeast. If that happens, are we going to see voter apathy from Northerners? So these are questions we need to ask because they really border on a national unity. You know, if oh. Northerners versus Southerners are taking out their ethnic frustrations on, on businesses, yeah. on online, you know, yeah. it's, 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 you know, and, and really it's, it's still, you know, a huge responsibility. We, we need to move to talk about something else now, but it's still a huge responsibility of the current administration to ensure that um, Nigerians are better united by their moves, by their actions, by the, you know, whatever steps, by their conversations, by statements that they and make. See, you, you it said is. it all, Sarge. If we can use, if, you know, we've seen examples of people like Adolf Hitler use propaganda to divide then it shows that we can use information to unite. But the sad thing is we're not getting that information as we should from the people in power. But I feel that's one of the steps forward. If we're having, you know, a Ministry of Information that, you know, you can see from their body language and from all their campaigns, preaching unity in the country, 
I feel will be will be you know a long way off, you know. Well, not just word, a lot, word of mouth. By exactly, a lot, a lot to say about just, this, but, yeah. but let's leave it at this. And also, we know that the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has sued the federal government and the Minister of Information and Culture over the directive to broadcast stations to stop tweeting. The suit uh, at the Federal High Court in Abuja alleges that the move is unconstitutional and unlawful. Osage, um, I don't think we can see the end of this Twitter ban discussion because we know that Serap had actually threatened to sue the federal government, sue the Minister of Information. They've actually followed through on the award. They, they have sued. And part of the things they're asking for is they're asking the government or they're asking the court to declare that the rules of the NBC, you know, that, you know, allowed the federal government to do this and make a law to say that broadcast stations should stop tweeting, is it's basically... It doesn't go with other international laws regarding free speech, right? They also want the court to declare that the NBC and Lai Mohammed lack the power and authority to unlawfully impose penalties such as fines and other sanctions on any journalists and broadcast stations for using Twitter. And this is obvious, right? We usually mention Twitter as part of our handles for you know, encouraging our followers to, or an audience to follow, to interact with us, but like, plus TV Africa, many other stations have now been forced to scrap Twitter from the list of all its social media platforms that it uses to engage with its, with its audience. So Serap is saying this is unlawful, this is unconstitutional, and more so they lack the authority to do so. Yeah, um, do you think the courts would actually you know, follow this through in their favor? Well, you know, seeing, I, that I, the, seeing that the clamor for judicial authority and independence is still a big debate. Um, I don't. I, to be honest, I don't know how this will turn out. Um, Serap has sued, has you know, se se taken the federal government to court a billion times. Um, I'm not sure, you know, how effective it has been. You know, and every time that there is a big issue in the country, you always see Serap step in and say we're going to sue, which they eventually do. But you know, where or how it eventually turns out, you know, nobody, you know, is sure. Um, um, and of course, it's within their rights to, of course, go to court, you know, to challenge certain. Um, a decision by the federal government. Um, uh, you know, I, I would still go back to, um, you know, the fact that all of this is, you know, has been and from day one has been totally unnecessary, um, you know, for to start with. You know, we're in 2021. There's many other conversations we should be having, and the Giant of Africa should not be having a conversation about whether, you know, to, uh, to ban Twitter or suspend Twitter's um, use in Nigeria, ignoring the usefulness that it has, um, you know, had across, you know, Nigeria for a long time. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians who do business on Twitter, who of course have legitimate business on online business on, on Twitter. What do you want them to do? You know, seeing the level of unemployment that you know exists in Nigeria today. What do you want those people to do? And how does the federal government not even care about the lives that it would that you know are affected by these things? How does the federal government not even care about crimes that are being solved on Twitter? How does the federal government not care about the um, instant response, you know, that people are able to get just by sharing one tweet, saving lives, um, getting um, crowdfunding for, for hospital bills Marketing and so much. Marketing So, 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 so it's much. Um, all the crimes of, you know, of, of excesses of the police officers in Nigeria, most of them, you know, get shared on Twitter and, you know, get exposed on Twitter. So how does the federal government not care about things like that? Especially... What, what, is the, what is the alternative? You know, if you say, okay, stop using Twitter, what, what's the alternative? And, you, you know, I think another thing where people point out and say this is just hypocrisy from the government is when they say that it was on platforms like Twitter, social media platforms, that this administration was able to rally people around, you know, use influencers to basically get votes. True or false? I mean, yeah, it was true. on social media that you'd see all these campaigns. It just pops up, sponsored posts, things like that. Influencers, influencers tweeting, people with you know large following. So it's it, you know just like many analysts on Plus TV Africa would say, you know when you make policies, you need to think about how these policies will turn around and affect you when you're out of power. Yeah, absolutely, and and. Um um, you can also tell, you know, from the initial 
reasons that were given, you know, where the, uh, the anger came from. You can also tell that it, it's, a, it's a personal thing and it has nothing to do with, um, you, know, the, the, you know, affecting Nigeria's existence or like or however else Lai Mohammed has started it. It started, first of all, with, you know, how can they, you know, how dare they delete the president's tweet and some of all of that. And then after that, you know, then they're talking about, oh, now the kind of putting messages there. Nobody, um, you know, complained or Twitter didn't delete it or threatened Nigeria's territory and, you know, existence and some of all of that. But you can tell that it is somehow some way personal. Um, um, I hope, you know, that Serap's uh, case gets to court. I hope that actually there is a ruling uh, that favors the majority of Nigerians and, of course, um, you know, Nigeria's, well, the majority of Nigerians. Yes, you know, I understand the talk about threatening Nigeria's security and safety and all of that, but it's a social media app mm -hmm. and there are many, many other ways that you can attack some of all these things that you see as concerns. Um, if you feel like there are certain handles on the app that um, are threatening Nigeria's security and are threatening Nigerian security agencies and asking people to go kill Nigerian policemen, then those things can be reported and they can be taken down as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, why you know, don't we take that route? Why are we going to shut down the whole app you know, entirely? Um, mm -hmm. It's tiring anyway, but best of luck to Serap and I hope that they get... Um, a judgment, you know, that favors majority of the people because we're in a democracy. Exactly. Um, up next is of the press with Tunde Kolawale to stay with us.